Hey, hey, what's up guys, Stark here, and today I'm going to go over color matching. And this is going to be without a plugin, but I'm going to show you with the plugin and show you why using a plugin, which I'm super guilty of using all the time, a lot, why it won't give you perfect results. So I just took, I did this all in just um, After Effects. This is just Element. I just recorded my desk and I found this pig model. And something shiny and I used one of the environment maps in there and then I just uh, changed the focus manually that's all so this is something that's super common which I mean obviously if you're comping your stuff into After Effects or you want stuff to match in the background or with the background sorry then you're gonna have to color match even if you use the uh, environment map from that same environment so again, I, this is the finished one and I'm actually going to reset that color match there because I just want to show you and I'm going to turn off my levels here now. And you can see that it already, I, I mean, it doesn't look too bad, right? I mean, I, I tried to match my lighting already, but still, if I turn it back on, you'll see the difference. So see it. not so subtle actually it makes a difference but we have this color matcher guy here okay and this is a cool plugin again use it all the time I'm super guilty of it so i'm going to just turn it on and i want to point something out because what it's doing is it is color matching but it's using the colors from the scene so let's just do this so let's go to backplate and then i'm going to turn the strength to 100. okay now the one thing you're going to see is how warm it got right and it's it's not incorrect but it kind of is okay because it's taking it's not taking into account the environment and my mouse can only go so far i can't pop it out but if i could lift this mouse off the screen and put it behind your head you're watching that it's it's not taking any information from there okay so it's just taking it from this frame and let's just do this let's just go ahead and just We'll just add a fast blur, fast box blur, and then to kind of draw home what I'm talking about and then repeat edges. So if you kind of look, the colors are warm, right? And that's essentially why the, the color is warm that when it does color match, it's nothing insane, okay? So there's this, I guess it's not really old school, but it's something I like to use because I, I again, I say this all the time, you have more control. And it's using levels and I suppose you could do this with curves, but I would use levels because you have your shadows, highlights, and midtones. So we're just gonna do levels, all right? Now, all we're gonna do is find like a good general frame and, okay, this one's good, okay? Now what you're gonna do is watch my mouse, okay? Because this is what we're gonna use as our guide. So it's almost like color by the numbers and that's what really helps. And it's a mixture of that and just, eyeing it so you could do it to where well let's actually let's just get in okay so i'm gonna start with the green channel okay and we're gonna go channel by channel and you'll start to see where the stuff doesn't really look correct so the whole premise or the whole trick behind this technique is you want this guy on each channel to kind of look like it sits correctly like if this was the black and white image within this black and white image Okay, so you could go in, you could just like start going in like, I guess this looks right. You could still get it because I've done that tons of times, but there's a more exact way and that's just going by the numbers. And I'm debating depending how long this takes to whether to uh, like speed it up or not, all right? So starting with the green channel because it has the most information, our eyes are the most sensitive to it. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is start with the highlights, okay? so you want to find areas of your image that have these things. So I don't, I, I mean, so here's the thing. I don't want to go by the monitor because it's it's an actual light. I want to go by something that's sort of the same material, which is this teapot. This is an actual teapot. It's real. Okay. And each channel, we're going to get this number. When we go over, you see how it changes. So we want a value green about 0.91. Okay. Now, if we go over a highlighted area, like right, let's just zoom in. Okay, if you look, the green, it's about 0.5. All right, so 
always get these mixed up. So start bringing it down. You could just sort of do it and then get in the ballpark. So the green's 0.7. All right. Point eight, and let me double check. Sorry, point eight. So no, that is good. All right, that is actually my fault. Okay, so green for the highlight. Just double check there. Yep, point eight, point eight. Okay, we'll turn it off and on, and let's see. Security C, it's kind of helping. All right, now I think what I'll do is I'll just do this channel, speed it up, because I don't think you want to watch each one, but. Uh, Still, we'll see. Now, let's try to find a mid-tone. And a good mid-tone would be like, don't want to say this because that's a little dark, but something like right here. So in the green, we're looking at about 0.19. And then our area right here is like 0.2. So let that save. Okay, so 0.2, not 0.3. So that was even a little bit too much. I like to just hover around just to get like general. So point two, we'll call it there. And then lastly, our shadows, which these are not super dark shadows. So I could go here and say green 0 0.0067, but no. Uh, I should have said this too at the start. You want to find things that are like uh, color values. Like, so this is a shadow, okay? But over here or right here is more like the type of uh, light level, okay? So if we look here, the green, so it's about 0 0.08, and right here is, oh wait, sorry, was I reading the channel? Yeah, no, 0 0.08, and then green 0.13. Just don't feel like that's a bit too much. So maybe 0.17, yeah, okay, see. Point one, point one. Cool. So now let's turn it off and back on. So you can see that it is, it's changing the entire look of it. Okay. So now we're going to go to the red channel next. And I, I kind of tend to go to green, red, then blue, because green has the most information. Red and blue have the same amount of information, but blue channel is usually where all the, the crap is. So this is just the way that I do it. So now we're in the red. So we start all over. So there's our highlight, red, 0.8. Point eight. Okay, now moving on to the blue channel. And you can probably see here, I'll switch. Remember I said that's where all the crap is. So let's go back to our green. It's nice. And I shot this on my phone. So you can start to see some artifacts. If you go to the blue, ah. All right, so blue channel. And again, once again, same thing. So, Okay, guys, and there you go. So I sped up a lot of these just because I didn't want to spend some time. So let's go to our RGB level here, okay? And we'll turn it off and on. Okay, and we could, let's compare it to the other one. So it's pretty much the same. But that's what you could do. And uh, the other thing, I sorry I didn't mention it, is if as I'm going over these, okay, so so like let's find the let me go back to let's just do the green because that one worked out well. So go back here, green, shadowy area, green point one. Okay. So you could one what you could do is you have the input black white gamma you could use this to try to get your numbers in so like the gamma would be like the mid area and then try to match it but i kind of just go by the slider and i like to highlight over because even though if i just type it in like green here uh or like the highlight green 0.58 okay and then i went to over to the right? 0.58. It's not going to kind of do the same. So that's why I, I like to use the slider because again, I'm looking at how it fits into the image. So 
I guess either method is valid, but that's the one that I go with. And I kind of use these guys where it's more like, okay, I'm way off the mark. So that's why I'll kind of shuffle these around and stuff. Okay, so back to RGB. All right, and let's turn it off, get a RAM preview. So I'm just gonna let this play a couple times. This is with the color off. So this way you don't have to, I could do a quick comparison. So there we go, so it's off. And now I will turn it back on. All right, cool. And that's with the color matching. So that's all you guys. Start matching all your colors. I wanted to use just a solid color because this is a very good introduction and simple way to do it. So there we go. I hope you guys now understand stuff. And one thing to also keep in mind is that I did not do this on an adjustment layer because then it would affect the background and I would be essentially chasing my tail because I'm trying to match the color I'm changing. So that is all. I hope this helped, guys, and look forward to the next one later.